Okay, I want to teach you two concepts today, two ideas. Um, keep them in the back of your mind. They might come in handy someday. And so the first one is all about square waves. Uh, people know about sine waves and square waves, but uh, you hear that a square wave can be represented by an infinite number of odd harmonics. So if you take the first odd harmonic and the second odd harmonic, if you keep adding odd harmonics, you start getting closer and closer to approximating a, a square wave. And if you have an infinite number of, har of uh, odd harmonics, you will ex be exactly a square wave. So that's just a mathematical fact, okay? So let's, let's look at one on the spectrum analyzer, all right? So I'm using this little uh, RF generator, so I have it set to 45 megahertz. And we can see it on the uh, spectrum analyzer from zero to 1.8 gigahertz, you have tons and tons of harmonics. So uh, let's change the frequency a bit. We'll do a stop of uh, 500 megahertz. And you can see these are all the odd harmonics and there's a little bit of even harmonics in there, but not very much, but, but those are all the odd harmonics, okay? And so if they were all equal in power, then that would be exactly a square wave too, I believe. Uh, they all have to be equal in power. So this one is kind of being a sine wave, I mean a square wave, I'm sorry, square wave. If you have equal number of odd harmonics. And if you take a look at it on, on an oscilloscope, you see that uh, uh, it looks like a square wave, right? It's a bit rounded, but it looks like a square wave. So, uh, so let's say that you uh, understand this theory. What if you go backwards? What if you have a square wave and you start removing harmonics? You remove that one and you remove that one. What if you removed all the harmonics except for the first one? would you end up with a sine wave, all right? Well, let's do that. So this is 45 megahertz. I have a narrow, I have a narrow 45 megahertz filter. It's a little crystal filter here. And we'll put that 45 megahertz crystal on. And uh, let's go look at the spectrum analyzer. And we're only left with one. All the other harmonics went away. We're only left with uh, 45 megahertz. That's that's it, right? We can do a uh, we can do a peak search, uh, peak search right, and we'll do a spin. There's a fancy function where it automatically uh, zooms in on the <laughs> on the peak. So anyway, it's at 45.003. Pretty accurate. So 45 megahertz, single single thing. Let's take a look at it on the oscilloscope. And it's lower in amplitude because we've just uh, put in a filter. But look at that. Our square wave turned into a sine wave because we, we removed all of the harmonics except for the fundamental. So it's a really easy way if you are trying to build a perfect sine wave, just filter all the harmonics. Just get rid of the harmonics and you will end up with a sine wave uh, mathematically, right? All right, so that's, uh, that's trick number one. Uh, trick number two is gonna do the same thing. So, not the same thing, but a, a similar idea. We're going to remove the filter. And we're gonna go back. And let's make sure that uh, we have all of our harmonics, okay? So uh, it's pretty easy to build a 45 megahertz oscillator, but what if you wanted to build a 500 megahertz oscillator? Well, that's a little bit more difficult, right? Um, so what you do is you figure out one of these, okay? So what if we had all of these harmonics? They're all the odd harmonics. What if we took the 11th harmonic? The 11th harmonic of 45 is 45 times 11, it's 495, right? Let me do the math here on my calculator. 45 times 11, yeah, 495. So uh, if we found number 495 here, right? Uh, that's what we want. So let's just filter that one out, right? So I have, I have a bandpass filter. So let's, uh, let's put that in here. So this one should allow that 495 uh, megahertz to go through, but should keep anything else from going through. 
And let's take a look. There it is, number 11. Yay! So let's zoom, on, zoom in on him. Uh, peak search, right. There he is. Uh, and then we'll go zoom in on him. Doop, 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 doop. There we go. 495.003. Very nice. All right, let me show off one, one feature of this analyzer that I don't think many people will know spectrum analyzers can do. This one's very special. All right, we're going to turn on marker function and we're going to turn on counter. Okay, and uh, I don't know if you can see it, but immediately the, uh, the decimal place went way up on this thing. It went to uh, 494.9977. All right. And let me take the bandwidth, well, let's take the span, and let's, uh, let's zoom in even farther. And um, we'll do a peak search, uh, marker center, marker function, uh, peak marker tracking, where is tracking? Marker function tracking on. Okay, so I've enabled two things. One, I've enabled the counter, and the other, I've enabled tracking. So it's always find every single sweep, it's finding the peak, and every single sweep, it's doing phase lock looping and locking into that signal and running it through a frequency counter. And so it says 494.99762, 497.770. So Every single sweep, it's measuring very, very accurate um, the uh, frequency that you have the marker on. Um, it's a special function of it. It's an option available for the spectrum analyzers. It has a oven-controlled oscillator and uh, has a, a very stable counter. So anyway, just showing off. Okay, so I showed you two concepts. One was uh, remove, remove. Um, harmonics to get back to a, a good sine wave and the other is use the harmonics and figure out which one you like and then just take that one.